new ESPN documentary about the rise and fall of O.J. Simpson. It includes new and revealing interviews with O.J.'s childhood friends, others at the center of the case, and it's generating positive reviews and headlines. Amy, you've got the story. That's right. I mean, you may think you know everything you can know about O.J. Simpson and his murder trial back in 1995 when he was found not guilty in the killings of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman. But this documentary is truly a revelation. More than 20 years after the divisive verdict, not guilty of the crime of murder, America's interest in O.J. Simpson has been reborn. This spring, millions watched the star-studded FX miniseries The People vs. O.J. Simpson. If I don't talk, it looks like I have something to hide. But now there's a brand new documentary from ESPN, O.J. Made in America, a new five-part series telling what may be the definitive story from the lawyers, jurors, friends who were all a part of it. Beginning with O.J.'s meteoric rise to fame as football star and pitchman. He's plucked out of the black community, out of black consciousness, and he's submerged in an all-white university. The film chronicles the rise and fall of the Hall of Famer, that initial shock of his arrest. It was quite surprising. Your ex-husband's always a suspect in a case. And it delves into the explosive history of race relations and the LAPD, and how that was used by the defense, like when the jury was brought to see his house. We took all of his white friends down, put all of his black people up, pictures he probably had never seen before because that's what we were told the jury would identify with. The defense team's job, as, as Carl Douglas and anyone else would tell you, is to, to use all the arrows in their quiver. If we had had a Latin jury, we would have had a picture of him in a sombrero. There would have been a mariachi band out front. We would have had a pinata at the upper staircase. So in the end, what does the film's director think? Did OJ do it? The last thing I want to do is take away from the greater message of the film, which is honestly trying to hear from all sides and to understand why all this stuff happened, both the crime itself potentially, but also sort of why everyone lost their minds in the case in 1994, 95, and why the verdict was what it was. O.J. Simpson Made in America premieres this Saturday on ABC and then continues Tuesday night on ESPN. And, George, I know you have even more. Very special guest right here now, the former Los Angeles District Attorney, Gil Garcetti, is here with us right now. Thank you for joining us right now. Thank you. You, know, you have not been speaking out in this case for years, for two decades. I know it took a lot of convincing for you to be part of this document. What, you said no twice? Right. What finally convinced you? My son. Ezra, the director, had contacted me and had a number of conversations uh, with me, and I continued to say no, as I have for 21 years. But it was my son who said, Dad, it's time for you to speak. No one knows the facts that you know, and I think you can really trust Ezra to do a professional job. But you've said even you learned something about the case from this documentary. I, I certainly did. It gave me chills what just could you asking. Learn? You know, I, I, I did learn. I learned a few things, I won't spoil it all for everyone, but the one thing I did learn, for example, Chris Darden and Marsha Clark were never supposed to ask O.J. to try on the glove. He'd probably been working out his hand, developing muscles in his hand, and we knew that the glove would shrink, right? It had been in the elements, it's leather. What we didn't know until I saw it on this film was that O.J. Simpson was taking arthritic medication for his hands. And he was told, if you stop taking this arthritic medication, your hands will swell, your joints will stiffen. My God. You know, lawyers are supposed to do everything to, to defend their clients. Is that crossing the line? No, no. I don't think it is. Uh, did it tick me off and I, I use it? I would use a different <laughs> word. Uh, yes, it did. But. I can't say it's really crossing the line. They, they did everything in their power. They got away with a lot. But we were baited into perhaps even having them try on the glove in the first place. It was never supposed to happen. And that's something that shouldn't have happened. You've also been fairly tough on Marsha Clark in some recent interviews saying she wasn't your choice. Marsha's a fabulous lawyer, but I had picked Bill Hodgman. Uh, to be the lead prosecutor. He had all the talent characteristics that I felt that were necessary for this particular case. 
And, and, and when you look back at all that, it was, you, you, I think you're coming to the realization this was always going to be a tough case and, and maybe one that was not winnable. Didn't feel that it was not winnable. We knew we'd win the case. Uh, once we had the jury we had, we knew we weren't going to get a guilty verdict in the first case. We expected a hung jury. And then the, what the sympathy towards O.J. Simpson would dissipate and we knew we'd find more evidence, specifically the Bruno Mali shoes that he claimed he never owned. What did you learn about what this said about the state of race relations, not only in Los Angeles, but in America? That was much deeper and hit a vibrant chord, especially in the black community, than I expected. Uh, I don't know if you know the story about me reaching out to President Carter. No. In the middle of the trial, I am trying to figure out, all right, what do I say as a good CEO with 1,100 lawyers if, in fact, there's a guilty verdict, which we didn't expect, I knew what to say, a hung jury, which I knew what to say and expected that, but I really didn't know what to say if it was a not guilty verdict. Horrible for race relations in the country as a whole. My staff couldn't come up with anything. I convened a group of 30 black ministers. And they said, oh, he's guilty, don't worry about it, they'll convict him. They came up with zero. Jimmy Carter was coming into town, Habitat for Humanity. So I reached out to him, Mr. President, can I meet with you about the O.J. Simpson case? Sure. Meet me in this little community called, city called Linwood. I went out there, he took off his carpenter's belt. We went into a little room by ourselves. He heard my scenarios. And he looked at me, and George, it was like getting cold cocked in the stomach. He said, Gil, they're coming back not guilty. And I react like you react. And I said, boom. I mean, he was so sure of this. And he said, of course he did it. We all know he did it, but he's not a street thug. And you and I know he's not a danger now to anyone else. And many innocent black men have been convicted. Some executed. This is payback time. Wow. Great story, Gil Garcetti. Thanks for coming on You're this welcome. morning. You're welcome.